From 1961 to 1971 the Americans sprayed tens of millions of liters of herbicides over the jungles of Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam. The goal of the massive operation was to destroy the lush vegetation that served as cover for the enemy. However, the side effect of this entire operation was to cause millions of people to lose their health or even their lives. As early as 1961, Operation Trail Dust I.E. Defoliation Removal of leaves from the trails in Laos and Cambodia along which more and more fighters were sent from the north to the battle areas began. 75 million liters. In July 1965, the first herbicides began dumping in the heart of South Vietnam as well, and clouds of chemical fumes inexorably reached orchards near Bien Hoa and Lai Thieu, with disastrous consequences for the mango, sugar apple, jackfruit, and pineapple crops. The trees withered almost overnight the leaves on thousands of rubber trees also turned brown. The local population was confused at first, as they saw no reason for this seemingly perfectly natural disaster. Eventually, however, the truth came out, and although farmers were assured that the chemical agent known as Agent Orange should not last more than one year, many took it as little consolation. One colonel in the Army of the Republic of South Vietnam noted that the anger and anxiety generated among the population by the defoliation carried out near populated areas largely outweighed any military gains. At the same time, however, he acknowledged that defoliants were an effective way to cut off enemy lines of communication in the jungle, especially in the mangrove swamps along the Saigon River. This program peaked in 1968 to 1969 a total of about 75 million liters of defoliants were produced, more than half of which, contaminated with dioxin, later spread freely throughout Indochina. This issue has been one of the most controversial views of subsequent generations on the entire war one cannot help but be deeply disgusted by the planned and systematic destruction of the environment to achieve military tactical objectives. 2 million casualties. It is also hard to doubt that some Vietnamese and perhaps even Americans themselves felt some of the side effects of Agent Orange. And, on the other hand, it is worth exercising common sense and great caution about the overly extreme claims made already in the 21st century by Hanoi, and by some organizations in America, that these side effects were long-lasting and affected hundreds of thousands of war-generation people causing them tragic consequences such as cancer and other horrible diseases. Official Hanoi historians even cite figures of up to 2 million civilians who were allegedly victims of Agent Orange. We know, however, that dioxins seriously damage the bodies of only those people who are exposed to them for long periods of time, and on this scale it happened to very few during the war. One southern veteran who gave his opinion noted that he and his colleagues worked with defoliants all the time, spraying them from manually operated feeders, and none of them suffer any side effects today. In fact, he suggests that the health deterioration observed in some Vietnamese farmers may be due not so much to the use of Agent Orange as to their notorious and careless use of insecticides. But is Agent Orange innocent? Regardless of whether he's right, we also have scientific research that was commissioned in the 1980s by Australian Judge Philip Evatt. At that time, two years of evidence was gathered to answer the question of whether Agent Orange had any effect on the judge's compatriots who served in Vietnam resulting in a nine-volume and 2,760-page report that unequivocally designated the chemical as not guilty. One of the scientists who advised the Royal Commission stated with typically Australian candor most of the problems that plagued Vietnam War veterans were not related to Agent Orange they were simply due to the fact that they had been through a bloody war. In his report, Evett suggested that the most compelling and common causes of the difficulties faced by Australian veterans were probably tobacco and alcohol abuse, as well as post-traumatic stress disorder. Thus, while it is an undeniable fact that this defoliant was a tool of warfare that can hardly be viewed positively today, one should not automatically accept the most extreme theses regarding the alleged effects of this particular substance on the people who were exposed to it, 